are fossils that whisper. And then, there are fossils that speak loudly from the deep past of human origins. The discovery in the Caucasus Highlands of Skull 5 does not whisper. Dated to 1.8 million years old, it stands at a crucial threshold in human evolution. The earliest known humans who lived outside Africa, and a fossil whose face seems to look both backward into the past and forward toward the lineage that became us. De Manisi Skull 5 is a nearly complete hominin cranium associated with a complete mandible. It was recovered at the site of De Manisi in the Republic of Georgia. Radiometric and stratigraphic evidence place the remains at approximately 1,800,000 years in age. The anatomical characteristics of this specimen, together with the other De Manisi hominin individuals, present evidence for a population of early humans that was present outside Africa at this early date. These early humans likely lived without fire. There is no evidence of its use at Demanisi. They endured freezing winters. They confronted deer, elephants, wolves, and the giant hyenas that gnawed their bones. They made decisions about where to rest, where to hunt, and how to survive in terrain no African hominin had ever seen. The Demanisi community represents an early proof of concept that humans were already capable of exploring, settling, and thriving far from their place of origin. They carried within them the psychological seeds, curiosity, mobility, durability, that later exploded into the global diaspora of Homo sapiens. Skull 5 is the face of our great-grandfather's great-grandfather. His bones tell us that our family began humbly, with small brains, battered teeth, and stone flakes no larger than a hand. Yet he also tells us that the greatest gift our lineage possessed was not size or intelligence, but adaptability, cooperation, and the urge to keep walking. Those traits, the ones we see glimmering in the Domanese humans, are the true inheritance we carry. The skull is notable for the combination of a small cranial capacity and a large, robust face. The brain volume measures approximately 546 cubic centimetres, this is smaller than most Homo erectus specimens, and falls within the upper range of Australopithecus and the lower range of early African Homo habilis. The cranium displays a low vault profile. The frontal bone presents a projecting glabella region and a continuous brow ridge. The temporal lines converge strongly. The vault lacks the pronounced rounding characteristic of modern humans. The occipital bone is thickened with a transverse torus along the midline and a nuchal region showing evidence of strong neck muscle attachments. The mastoid region is robust, and the petrous portion of the temporal bone is well developed. The face is large compared with the brain case. The zygomatic arches are laterally expanded. The midface projects forward, producing a muzzle-like profile. The nasal opening is broad, the palate is relatively long, the alveolar region of the maxilla projects forward, the mandible is tall and strongly built, the mandibular corpus is deep along the entire tooth row, the symphysis does not show a distinct chin and slopes posteriorly. The dental arcade is relatively large, the teeth are heavily used with pronounced wear, including advanced wear on the incisors and molars. The combination of features is significant. The small cranial capacity and strong alveolar projection resemble earlier African species, such as Homo habilis. At the same time, the brow ridge form, cranial base proportions, temporal bone structure, and nuchal morphology resemble early Homo erectus from Africa and Asia. This combination of traits indicates a transitional form that links earlier and later Homo. Dimonese has yielded at least five relatively complete crania, along with several mandibular and postcranial elements. These include individuals of differing ages, including juveniles, young adults, and older adults. The brain sizes of these individuals range from about 600 to 730 cubic centimeters. Skull 5 has the smallest cranial capacity, while maintaining the largest and most robust face. There is significant morphological variation among the Dimanisi specimens. Differences are seen in cranial vault height, facial breadth, mandibular size, and dental proportions. This level of variation is within the range observed in a single species population. These individuals present an early population outside Africa, with variation likely reflecting sex differences, developmental differences, and individual variation, rather than the presence of multiple species. The presence of an aged, toothless individual 
indicates social tolerance and provisioning within the group, since such an individual must have survived without full masticatory function. Skull 5 also shows evidence of traumatic injury and heel defects, suggesting survival after injury. The Dmanisi deposits date to shortly after the Olduvai Matuyama geomagnetic reversal. The Earth's magnetic field was normally oriented during the Olduvai interval, then flipped back to reversed polarity at 1.78 million years ago. Because it coincides with early human evolution and toolmaking phases, it is one of the most important magnetic markers used to date early Pleistocene archaeological sites. The sediments show rapid burial episodes involving volcanic ash and gully infill, possibly triggered by the geomagnetic reversal. The hominin remains were deposited together with faunal remains and simple flaked stone tools. The artifacts include flakes, cores and simple choppers. These are characteristic of early stone technology. The local environment consisted of open grasslands and wooded areas. Faunal remains include large carnivores and large herbivores. The hominins would have interacted with carnivores through both scavenging and predation avoidance. Butchery marks on animal bones at the site show that the inhabitants processed animal carcasses for meat and marrow. The cranial shape of Dumanisi Skull 5 shows strong post orbital constriction, limited vault height, and low relative parietal expansion. These characteristics represent an early stage within Homo. However, cranial base traits such as the petrous temporal orientation, the form of the auditory region, and the mastoid configuration align with Homo erectus morphology. The facial morphology is primitive. The mid-face projects forward. The canine jugum is strong. The nasal margin is smooth. The mandibular symphysis is receding without a projecting chin. These features resemble earlier Homo habilis and Australopithecus. At the same time, the large size of the face relative to body size also appears within the range of early Homo erectus. Dental wear in Dumanisi Skull 5 indicates a heavy reliance on tooth use, both for food processing and possibly for non-dietary functions. The molars show advanced occlusal attrition. The incisors are worn flat, indicating repetitive use for biting tough materials or possibly for guided manual tasks. The Dumanisi individuals show similarities to early African specimens such as Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. These similarities include small cranial capacity, projecting mid-face, large jaws, and heavy dental wear. However, Dumanisi Skull 5 also shows traits more similar to African Homo erectus specimens, such as those from the Turkana Basin. These include a low cranial vault, an elongated cranial base, and a thick brow ridge. The transitional combination of features suggests that Dimanisi Skull 5 represents a population closely following the divergence of early lineages within Africa. The Dimanisi population may represent an early branch from the ancestral African stock, or it may represent part of a continuous lineage migrating from Africa into Eurasia. Homo erectus is recognized by increased brain size relative to earlier Homo by a long, low cranial vault, strong brow ridges, reduced facial projection, and increased body size. Dumanisi Skull 5 shares several of these characteristics, including brow ridge morphology, basicranial configuration, and postcranial proportions. The small brain size of Dumanisi Skull 5 is unusual for Homo erectus, but other Dumanisi individuals show cranial capacities closer to the low end of Homo erectus. The postcranial remains from D. Manisi indicate body proportions similar to later Homo erectus, including relatively long lower limbs and modern human-like stature. These proportions are consistent with long-distance terrestrial locomotion. The technological context at Dumanisi consists of simple flake tools rather than the Aculean hand axe tradition often associated with Homo erectus. This suggests that hand axe technology was not required for the initial expansion of hominins outside Africa. His hands were not delicate, they were scarred and strong. Once, he fell and fractured the right side of his face. The healed break still marks the zygomatic arch. He wore his life on his bones. In this interpretation, Skull 5 is not an outlier, but part of a community whose diversity reflects the breadth of a single species undergoing geographic expansion. If we imagine Skull 5 in life, we must start with his body. 
Estimates place him at five feet tall and 110 pounds, a small man by modern standards, but physically capable and adapted for long-distance travel. De Manisi shows that hominins migrated out of Africa earlier than previously believed. The presence of several individuals indicates a stable population rather than a temporary dispersal. The variation within the Damanisi sample does not require the presence of multiple species. Instead, it represents the expected range within a single species. The characteristics of Damanisi Skull 5 demonstrate that large brain size was not necessary for dispersal outside Africa. Instead, the combination of bipedal locomotion, flexible diet and simple tool use appears sufficient. This challenges earlier assumptions that larger brains and advanced tool industries were required for hominin expansion. The morphology of Demanisi Skull 5 supports the interpretation that early humanity was a single evolving lineage displaying substantial internal variation. Under this model, early African Homo habilis, the Demanisi population, and later Homo erectus represent successive stages within one lineage. The evolution of this lineage includes gradual increases in brain size, changes in cranial vault form, reduction of facial projection, and refinements in stone tool technology. The Damanisi population lived in a temperate environment with seasonal variation. Winters were cold, and there is no clear evidence of controlled fire. The hominins must have adapted through group behavior, clothing from animal skins, or occupation of sheltered spaces. The stone tool assemblage shows that the inhabitants processed animal carcasses. Cut marks on bones indicate defleshing and marrow extraction. The hominins likely scavenged from carnivore kills and occasionally hunted smaller animals. The high incidence of dental wear and pathology indicates a diet that included tough materials. The presence of multiple individuals of varying ages, including an older, toothless person, indicates social interaction and resource sharing. The survival of an edentulous individual for an extended period suggests that others assisted that person, possibly by providing softer foods. If de Manisi Skull 5 and its associated individuals represent part of a single evolving lineage extending from early to later Homo erectus, then the origin of Homo sapiens can be viewed as a later stage in the same history. Under this interpretation, the early dispersal from Africa is part of the continuous movement of populations that eventually produced diverse Homo erectus groups throughout Eurasia. De Manisi Skull 5 provides essential data for understanding the early phases of human evolution. It documents a small-brained but anatomically advanced hominin living outside Africa at 1,800,000 years. Its morphology combines primitive and derived traits. This combination supports placement near the base of Homo erectus. Comparison with African and Asian Homo erectus specimens indicates that De Manisi Skull 5 might represent a population situated near the root of a continuous lineage. This lineage may extend from early humans in Africa through De Manisi to later Homo erectus across Eurasia, with eventual descendants among later humans. The De Manisi fossils demonstrate that brain enlargement was not required for dispersal outside Africa. They show that early humans possessed locomotor ability, dietary flexibility, and group organization sufficient for long-distance movement and survival in varied environments. These characteristics define a lineage that later produced Homo erectus and ultimately modern humans. That is why the discovery at Dimanisi is more than a fossil find. It is a message from deep time. We have always been wanderers. We have always cared for one another. And before we became modern, before we wrote or spoke, before we shaped metal or fire, we were already human. Their brains were small, but their world was large. Please click on these links to learn more about our human journey and thank you for watching.